Hello, welcome to this video. Uh, today, we are going to be doing a tier list of your 2019, 2020 Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, it was a pretty good year for the Flyers. Uh, it's a shame how the season ended, or hopefully just stopped and we can kind of get back into uh, where the Flyers left off because I really liked what I saw out of them this season. And I thought that, you know, kind of missing hockey, I thought maybe this would be a good time to put together a tier list uh, talking about the different performances of individual Flyers players and uh, kind of how they contributed to this uh, probably one of the best seasons the Flyers have had in some time. So uh, we got S tier, which to me, it just they did outstanding in their role. They met expectations and, you know, beyond. A tier, I think they did a really good job. I think they had a good year and I was impressed by how they contributed to the team. Uh, B tier, they played their role. They did what they were supposed to do. I'm happy with them. Uh, C tier, I maybe wanted a little more out of their performance. D tier, I want a lot more, but there's still hope. And F tier to me, it's just, it, it, they're a hopeless cause. They're not really worth keeping. Um, so I remember having kind of some feelings about certain players during the season uh, because I watched quite a few games and then I went to quite a few games as well uh, in person. But I had to watch some recaps recently to kind of catch up and remind myself about some of these players because some of these guys I just didn't really have too strong of opinions about. Uh, and watching their performances and watching some of the recaps. It's not too comprehensive, but it gives me an idea of what, uh, where they would fall in this list. So this is kind of broad stroke, but I think uh, it gets the point across. So without further ado, I say we just jump right into this and uh, we talk about our first guy, which is Claude Giroux, the captain. Uh, Claude Giroux had a pretty good year. I'm willing to put him in A tier. I think that he stepped up quite a bit as a leader. I thought that um, his production was really good and I thought that, uh, you know, he, even though he's been a really great consistent player for basically the past decade now, um, I still felt like this year he really stepped up and kind of captained this team in a way that he hasn't before. And uh, I attribute a lot of that to Alain Vigneault, but uh, in general, I'm just really happy with Drew's performance. Uh, next, we got Nate Thompson. I don't have a lot to say about Nate Thompson. You know, we only got a few games out of him, but, uh, you know, he's a big fourth line center, good hitter. Um, you know, I think he played his role fine. I, th I think, you know, for the few games we saw, he did okay. Maybe I'd like a little more points out of him, but I'm willing to put him in B tier for now. And maybe expectations towards next season will be a little bit higher for him. We'll see what kind of player he really is. Uh, next we got Brian Elliott. I'm willing to put Brian Elliott in B tier. Uh, I think that he was a pretty serviceable backup this year. And while in the, for the most part, I'm not crazy about Brian Elliott's uh, game. I think he slowed down quite a bit compared to, you know, his earlier years, even before the Flyers. Um, I was still really happy with what we got out of Elliott, especially when Carter Hart was hurt. I thought that Elliot did a pretty good job at stepping up to the plate and kind of keeping the team uh, alive. Next we got Matt Niskanen. Um, I'm really happy with Niskanen. I'm willing to put him in B tier. I think that he did his job well. I'm actually really happy that we got him for Gudos. And uh, you know, he's he's been like a first line defenseman pretty regularly for the Flyers this season. and. You know, it, maybe he wasn't perfect. He, there were definitely some holes in his defensive game, but I think putting him on a pairing with Provorov, who's a pretty offensive defenseman, uh, it was really nice to see him kind of anchor that defensive core and maybe kind of bail Provorov out sometimes when he needed it. Uh, next we got Justin Braun. That's another guy I'm willing to put in B tier. I liked what Braun uh, brought to the Flyers defensive core. I think he brings a veteran presence. And when I was watching the recaps, I was really impressed by how he was able to kind of just get the puck out of the defensive zone. You know, he was really good at controlling rebounds and, um, you know, just got the play moving. He didn't second guess himself. He didn't kind of wait for things to happen. He just, he got the puck and he got rid of it. And I don't think every play by Braun was spectacular, but I liked what I saw out of him. Next we got JVR. Uh, I'm willing to put Van Riemsdyk in A tier. I think that uh, JVR had a great year. 
I think that him and TK together, I mean, TK, in my opinion, would not have the, the goals that he had without JVR. Because when I watch these recaps and when I watch these games, I just, I see Van Riemsdyk getting passes to connect me that I, I didn't even think could get through defenders like they do. I mean, it, it's really impressive uh, just how well Van Riemsdyk played and um, just really knew how to get the puck to the net and to the guys who were going to get it to the net. Uh, next we got Jake Vorchek. Vorchek's tough. I, I really would love to put him in A category, especially for what he's being paid. But, you know, I think his game is just... You can just see through it so easily. You see him get the puck. You know he's going to pass it to the guy who's crashing the net. And it, it works. He had good a good season, good point totals. But, you know, I just feel like he's not um, all he's cracked up to be. He's not really what he's paid to be. I think he does a fine job, like an okay job. But uh, I just don't think he's in the S or A tier like some of these other guys are. I think if you lose some of these S tier or A tier guys that we're going to talk about, it makes the Flyers a way worse team. You lose Voracek, I, I don't think it hurts the Flyers as bad as it would any of those other guys who are paid in a similar bracket to him. Um, but that being said, I thought he did a good, an, a serviceable job this season. I thought he did all right. Now we got Chris Stewart. I'm going to put Chris Stewart in F tier. I hate to do it, but the dude is just not an NHL player anymore. He barely was when he started. I think the only reason he ha he got the contract was because of that whole documentary series in the beginning of the season. I think Chuck, you know, kind of had a soft spot for him, but, you know, his his he didn't really show up for the team. He didn't do too much and uh, I just think that his game he plays an older game of hockey that you know has just evolved past him and kind of left him behind so he's in the AHL now it is what it is you know it, it wasn't that much money but it just bothers me that the organization was willing to kind of give him a contract when really if we're being honest the dude did not deserve one really didn't earn one in my in my opinion of course um, so he goes in F tier. I really, I would be okay with leaving Chris Stewart behind. Next we got Derek Grant. We only got a few games out of Grant, but I was pretty happy with what I saw. I'm willing to put him in B tier. Um, just, he was all over the place. You know, he was just like, especially watching the recaps, he really just got to, you know, those spots where the puck was going to be. And he had a few assists and a goal. And I thought, you know, he did all right in the few games that we got out of him. I was pretty happy really underrated player in my opinion um, next we got Tyler Pitlick Pitlick surprised me uh, he was a really pleasant surprise watching him uh, play because I thought he was gonna kind of be like Ryan Hartman's successor but I think Pitlick has a pretty great um, you know like multi-dimensional game where he hits hard and he's a really great third line player but he gets pucks to the net. He forechecks well. Um, I just, I liked what I saw out of Pitlick. I'm willing to put him in B tier. He impressed me, especially through the season. I remember constantly saying, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing out of Pitlick. Next, we got Kevin. Kevin Hayes, putting him in A tier. Easy. I think the Flyers are a lot better with him in the organization. I think his hockey sense and hockey IQ are just, I mean, it's just incredible to watch. It's like the dude sees the sport in slow motion. Uh, I was looking at his stats, you know, end of season stats, and I was a little let down. I was kind of surprised at um, some of the stuff that I saw. I thought, you know, maybe he did a little better in my head than what actually uh, was on the, you know, point sheet. But, you know, just watching Kevin Hayes play really is a treat. I, I really have enjoyed every single time I've seen him. And uh, I'm, I'm happy with the signing so far. Uh, obviously, the team did all right with him there, and I think he made a big difference. Um, but anyway, so moving on to Scott Lawton. Lawton is a borderline A, B kind of guy. I'm going to put him in B tier just because I think he did a great job, and I think you could put him anywhere on the depth chart, and he will succeed. He just does well with everybody. Um, but sometimes I watch Lawton play, and it seems like he kind of just locks into the right um, the right plays. And I don't know. I think for the most part, he does a good job. But every once in a while, I see something and I'm like, oh, you that did not go the way you thought it was going to go. 
But I'm happy with the season he had. He had pretty great point totals. He really set up some great plays on the ice. Um, I think he's going to be an A-tier guy next year. I think it's just kind of taking him a little slower than other players to really just, like Kevin Hayes, see the game in slow motion. But um, I, I was impressed with Lawton. Next we got Gosses Beer. I know everybody wants to put Gosses Beer in the F tier, and that's that's reasonable. Um, but I'm willing to put him in D because I think that the dude has hope still. I think that we can still get a good player out of Shane Gosses Beer. And worst case scenario, in my opinion, I think Gosses Beer is good enough where um, Seattle would take him in the expansion draft because I think that other teams will see that Shane Gosses Beer is a pretty good player. Um, he's just kind of struggling to figure out his game. But when I watch highlights and recaps with him in the games, um, he seems like he's in the right place and he's seeing the plays before they happen pretty well. But he just makes some really dumb mistakes on defense and he's a defender. And his presence really screws up the depth chart for their defensive core. So I just don't think he has a spot on the Flyers roster anymore. I just, I think that he'll be better off with another team. Um, but I don't think he's a hopeless cause. I, I just, it was pretty rough to watch him play, but I think that there is still a pro NHL player in Shane Goss's bear. Remains to be seen. Next we got Michael Roffel. Absolutely, 100% B tier. Another borderline A tier guy. I really liked what we saw at a Roffel. Um, I mean, the fact that the Flyers have him for so cheap is just awesome. You know, he's just such a great two-way forward. He he really just, I, I, he's honestly one of the most underrated Flyers, in my opinion. Uh, next, we got Robert Hag. This was a tough one. We didn't see a whole lot of action from Hag that, you know, that I really paid attention to. I'm willing to put him in B tier because he blocked a lot of shots. Um, when I watch recaps and stuff of him, I don't see anything that I hate but I just don't see anything that I love. I've seen a couple mistakes, but he seemed to do all right. I, I wasn't I wasn't too disappointed. All right, next we got Travis Sanheim. Sanheim is gonna be a C tier guy. I'm just, every, when I was watching during the season, I remember thinking, man, you know, Sanheim, he's, he's in there like offensively. He does a good job offensively, but on defense, he just like fumbles a lot. And watching the recaps really confirmed what I was thinking. I, he's just, he kind of lets goals get by him pretty often. And I think that his defensive partners, whoever that be at the time, usually it's Philip Myers, um, kind of get pulled into trouble because of him. And uh, I just want to see a better defensive game out of Sanheim. I, I was a little let down watching him on defense, but he's young. You know what I mean? He'll, he'll get better and he'll develop and... Uh, I like what I've seen in terms of him on the power play and him uh, coming in with the forwards as long as a, uh, an offensive uh, flyer kind of drops back and you know compensates for him moving up. But in general, I don't think that we need a super offensive defenseman because we have a pretty good forward core as it is right now. Um, so I would, I would just like to see a little more out of Sandheim. Uh, next we got Oscar Lindblom. I don't think this even needs to be an argument. I think he gets S tier easy, but I'm gonna argue it anyways, just in case there's anybody that disagrees. Um, Oscar Lindblom not only played his position phenomenally when he was playing during the first part of the season, um, but just the fact that he's been able to fight the fight that he's been in. And I mean, the team really seems to have rallied because of him, because of his um, his fight. and. You know, uh, Oscar really makes me proud to be a Flyers fan, and I think other Flyers fans agree, because he unites the sport um, for a common cause. And uh, it's nice to have a, a player like Lindblom who really makes me proud to be a Flyers fan. Um, so, you know, it, in terms of his on-ice contribution, 100%, great stuff. I'm really happy to see it. Um, but what he's done to kind of give this team a reason to to fight and to you know get in there and you know it's it's just it's really inspiring i i don't think there's uh any argument against him being an s tier um for the fight that he's fighting and for what he's done for the philadelphia flyers he has contributed to the philadelphia flyers in uh 
in such a superlatory way, in my opinion. Next, we got Travis Konechny, another guy who has really contributed to the Flyers in a big way. Um, great season, all-star season. How about that? Um, I can't really say too much more. I'm just very happy with the season that TK had. Comparing his play last year to this year is just ridiculous. Um, I mean, he's just in the right places at the right time, and he just, you know, he gets the puck to the net. I, I don't even know what else to say. I mean, watching him play this season was just so fun. It's, it, it was more fun watching him play than I can think of any other flyer in the last 10 or so years. Um, it, it really just was. It, it was a great season for Travis Connecting, and I can't wait to see um, the seasons following because he's so young and he has so much potential. Next, speaking of potential, we've got Ivan Provorov. Provorov's going in C category for me. Um, ah, man, I really wanted to put him in the B tier because he is that first line defenseman, but for a first line defenseman, I just expect a lot and he just makes quite a few mistakes. He doubts um, himself a lot in the defensive zone, and it's a bad place to kind of doubt yourself. Um, and I find that Niskanen a lot has to kind of um, compensate for the stuff that Provorov does. And while I think Provorov had a fine season, I don't think it was like the worst thing ever. For the amount of money he's getting paid, um, I just want to see some development defensively. I just want to see him step up a little more. Um, I wouldn't say he was as bad as Sanheim, but I still am not willing to put him in B tier yet. I just think that he still has a lot to learn on the blue line, and I'm glad that we have guys like Niskanen and Braun who can kind of show him how to make those decisions quicker and get the puck out of the defensive zone. Um, and next we got Philip Myers, kind of similar situation, although I feel bad for Philip Myers because I think being on a line with Sanheim really um, makes it difficult. For the most part, I, I, I liked what I saw out of Philip Myers, especially for being so young. But unfortunately, I still see some room to improve. And that's okay. These are young defensemen. They will, you know, figure this out and hopefully in a couple years be in that A tier and S tier. I, I think we could see it. Um, young guy, S tier though, Carter Hart, absolutely. 100% S tier. Flyers wouldn't be nearly as good without Carter Hart and that's not necessarily an insult to Brian Elliott um, but I think Carter Hart is the Philadelphia Flyers like to me Carter Hart is will be the reason if the Flyers the knock on wood win the cup or get to the cup I think Carter Hart will be the reason um, and now we got Sean Couturier A tier for me get in there yep Sean Couturier, A tier. Um, really, he was just all over the place. Great, great player. He's borderline S tier for me. It's pretty close, but I think I'm willing to put him in A tier. Um, just because defensively, sometimes I felt like um, he kind of uh, was a little sluggish coming back to the defensive zone. But I mean, for the most part, I have very few complaints about Couturier. He set up so many plays for both Giroux and Konechny, um, as well as guys like Voracek and Kevin Hayes and JVR. I mean, he really just had yet another phenomenal season in a list of, you know, excellent seasons. The dude really is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated players in the league. And we got Faraby. Um, Faraby had a good first year. I don't, I wouldn't say it was bad. He was just kind of up and down, but I think C tier is reasonable. I think that he still got some stuff to learn and his uh, decision-making in the offensive zone just needs to be a little quicker and I think once he gets you know figures things out a little quicker um, and it becomes a little more second nature uh, he won't just kind of luck into goals he'll he'll really make those plays his own last we got Kubel um, during the season I remember thinking not great then I watched some recaps and I was like oh, he did okay so it's kind of a tough one I'm gonna put him in B tier I'm feeling generous I think I think he can take a B tier spot um, but it's kind of a borderline BC. Uh, I think, you know, given the injuries that happened to the Flyers, not having Limblom and Nolan Patrick, um, Kubel kind of stepped up and played his role and did okay. Did better than Bonneman for sure. Um, so I'm willing to give him B tier, you know, good, good forecheck, good, uh, 
kind of power forward. I, I liked what I saw out of them, I guess. So anyways, that is uh, the tier list. I think I'm pretty happy with it. It looks like a good even distribution for the most part. Um, I would love to hear what your opinions are on this tier list. Uh, how would you change things? Where would you put certain guys? And uh, the link to this tier list will be in the description uh, of this video. So check that out, maybe fill it out, share that with me. And uh, yeah, I miss hockey. I'll bet you do too. Hopefully it comes back soon. Hopefully you're staying inside and staying healthy. Uh, thanks for watching.